What would be three questions, if you could only ask three questions to a human being to figure out if they're telling a lie or telling the truth, how would you start those three questions? What would they be? Ted, T-E-D, tell me, explain, describe, and then I would fill in the rest. Tell me. Tell me what you did last night, rather than who did you out with last night or were you with Sam last night? So tell me what you did last night. Uh, explain to me how important this relationship is to you. Describe to me what you want in this business partnership. Those questions allow people to tell a story. So if you really want to read someone out, read somebody, you want them to tell you a story. So the more I can get you to tell me a story, I hear you, I'm watching you, I'm getting your mannerisms mm -hmm. down, everything, but then you're also telling me what is important to you, what is of value to you. And then when you do that now, I don't have to sit there and guess and figure out, oh, how should I start my business pitch with Lewis? You already told me the things you like, mm -hmm. and so I can come in and speak to you in an intelligent way rather than trying to guess what to say. So ideally, when you start a conversation, and this could be for anything, it's not just catching a lie, this is really just trying to start a conversation, TED, T-E-D, tell me, explain, describe. You start mm. big, you get people talking and telling you stuff, even though you're like, I wanna know this specific thing, but if I ask the specific thing, this person's gonna shut down on me. So I can't go straight for that. So what you do is you narrow it. You get closer, you get, you go f from vague to, you know, more, you know, accurate to more accurate to then in the end, you get to that direct question because you've worked them to that point. And so when you watch these TV shows or when you ask somebody a direct question and you want a direct answer and you don't get it, this is why. It's work. It's a lot of work to connect with people, read people. And I think that's why, and I think society makes it seem like do these three tricks and you'll have people eating out of your hand and it, it doesn't work, it's not true. And this is why people struggle because they're looking mm. for the easy way when it's really about human behavior. The person across from you, like understanding them, being curious. Curiosity is wonderful. So let them tell you stuff, ask questions because you're curious and then you'll get more information rather than try, trying to go for like exactly what you want to know. And then the other thing too that helps with conversations is something called adaptability. Mm which a lot of people don't have. Like if I have a, con I have a conversation with you and I specifically want to know one thing, mm -hmm. but you want to tell me a whole other story around it, people don't have the patience. And so like, no, 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 no. We're talking about something else. Like stick, stick to the topic. And when you do that, you, you break a rapport, you mm. hurt the conversation. So it, a part of it is being patient. Let them take you a little bit on a journey and then slowly you can bring them back to where you want. But sometimes we come in so rigid, no, no, I have to talk about this, mm. this is the topic, and you're not able to adapt. So adaptability is being, is allowing a person to take you where they wanna go, letting somebody sit in the driver's seat oh, for a little bit. So you're telling me when my girlfriend is arguing with me about one thing, but then doesn't wanna address it and takes it around the, the, uh, the playground of all these other conversations, I, I get to listen to all those things to get it back to where I want to go to. Perhaps. As opposed to, babe, let's just focus on the problem right here. Well, it sounds actually like your girlfriend is actually more of an identity-based person. Mm. So what does that mean? Okay, so there's instructional, there's identity. So if I'm talking to you and I want to tell you, you know, you want to tell me basically, Evie, if you stop talking to this person, your life will be easier, right? You know, cut this person out of your life, right? And I'm like, no, I want to tell you how I feel. No, this makes me feel this way. This makes me feel that way. But you don't know. And you're just kind of like, all you have to do <laughs> is cut them out of your life. Cut this person out of your life. Or all you have to do is this one thing, problem solved. You are instructional. Let's just get to the point. What do we got to do to fix it? One, two, three, done. Identity is, I don't want to hear that. I want to take you on the journey <laughs> with me to tell you how I feel. This person, or when we are in that space, this this means this person just wants to tell you how they're feeling. They want to tell you about their identity. What's happening is about their identity. So they don't want. She doesn't want your solution. No, she doesn't no want you to tell you what to do. She wants you to listen to her. Mm -hmm. 
Whether you were in uh, the Secret Service doing an interview or an interrogation or in the real world now, I guess that is the real world, but after now, yeah. um, what are the social cues or psychological behaviors, body language, responses that people have before you take the polygraph test to know whether or not they're actually telling the truth? What are those few things that you would see? We talked about the body language. Uh, are there other things that would happen, social cues or behaviors? So it's interesting. Everybody would assume that the polygraph was the, the lie detector. Like you just ask the question, come on in, have a seat, Lewis, let's hook you up. Did right. you steal when you were a kid? You know, did you steal that gum or did you steal that? And then it just tells me everything. And it doesn't really work that way. Like typically the the lie detector is the person. So you sit across from a person, you have a conversation. And as we're discussing something, let's say you're applying to the US Secret Service, we'll make you a recruit. Okay, give it to me. And so we're asking you all these questions about your education, your background, um, drugs, whatever it is. And let's say we get to, I say to you, Louis, did you ever steal anything? And so now I look at, are there any shifts or any changes? Do you change the direction? No. <laughs> <laughs> People are usually not at that obvious, yeah, yeah. you know, there. But you can see, you can see something, you can feel it. It's also feeling people. I think that gets dismissed quite a bit that it's not just see here. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, it's also, you can feel another human the energy, being. Yeah. You can, you, and it's intuitive and you sh we should allow that and listen to that more rather than shut that down. But it would be, you know, if I would ask you that, I would hear the way you responded. Mm -hmm. Did you respond similarly to all the other questions the same way? Is your, you know, it's, it, let's say if I said, Louis, did you ever, you know, I asked you all these other historical questions and you're like, no, no, no. And then I say, Louis, did you, have you ever stolen anything? Absolutely not. So now something like that, as small as that, mm -hmm. I may mark that. I was like, okay, he said no, no, no for everything else. But here he said, absolutely not. Interesting. Why is it a bit more emphatic? He oh, cares yeah. more about either protecting something or that it actually isn't the truth. Maybe. And he doesn't want that to be honest. But I will no notice that it's different. Mm -hmm. That you did something different. Even if you, <clears throat> no. It's, it could be a very subtle thing. Or you might not give me anything. There are some people, and I've had those people where it's just like. Poker face all the way through. Some people, but they'll. I don't want to say they're professional liars, but some people, you know, would come in, especially if it was a criminal case mm -hmm. and they're guarding their, the truth really hard. And you have to try to figure out what that is. Or some people come in and it's, I swear to God, God, God knows I would never do oh, such mom, a thing. On my mom, grave. Of Those are usually red flags, unless it's a culture or a person who typically does it. If so, they, if they always say, I swear to God, I swear to my mom then it would be like, look, this is part of this person's natural language, or maybe in their culture, they refer to God quite a bit. But if it's not, and then you start doing that, then again, that's a red flag. So that's what you're really looking for, rather than we have some of these cookie cutter things. It's like, everybody does this, everybody does that. Now, are these things I'm talking about indicators? They, they are, but you may do them and I may not. Mm -hmm. I may do something else. Is there such a thing as person being radically honest all the time? No, I don't. I've not. I've not come across that. But I think here's the thing. It's OK to lie because have you ever been very, very, very honest, maybe with a person and then felt afterward, you know, I don't you feel a bit exposed mm. and you feel like, you know, I wish I didn't share this much with this person. Afterward, you kind of have that remorse mm -hmm. because we feel like it's a it's a protection mechanism. I don't want to tell you everything about me. I don't want to be an open book. Mm. And so I may and it may not be a lie. So by omission. So in the meeting, if somebody's pitching me a project or I'm talking talking about something, I don't like it or I don't like the direction it's going. I may not say I don't like this. I may say, thank you. You know, let me think about that. Meanwhile, I want, I want to say no way. I'm not doing it. That's terrible. So that that technically would be a lie. I'm yeah. like, you know what? Thank you. I'd let me think about that. Yeah. But I know I can't respond the first way. It shuts people down. That's why I, I feel like we hear people say, say no. You know, being able to say no to people more so because a lot of us have. To protect your time, your space, yes. your energy. Yeah. And that's wonderful. 
but don't say no. Find other ways to say no. No is ugly, no is mean, no is hurtful. So I can say, thank you so much, I'll let you know. Um, I'm not really sure if I'm able to, let me think on that. Find alternative ways to let people down. Why is that? Why not? To preserve the relationship. Because when you say no to someone, even if it's a friend, they it might stings. take it personally. It stings. Right? Why are you saying no to me? Mm. Why do you have to say it like that? You can say, you can reject people in a thoughtful way, in a professional way. And it, it just, it depends. Like, do you care about the relationship? And if you do, your no, your hard no can hurt people's feelings. People become sensitive because you're rejecting them. Mm. And so I'm going to think of a different way to say no. That's not going to impact you as much. It's really using language thoughtfully. Mm. So for example, you brought up lying. I love that. And you said, you know, when I was a kid, I lied. So I would never say to you, Louis, you're a liar. Or Louis, no, Louis, you're lying to me. I would say, Louis, I know you're not being truthful with me. Mm. Louis, you're holding something back from me. Sounds different. Mm. So it's the same way with language. We don't, we throw our words out and we don't realize that they land on someone. Yeah. And so then we scratch our heads, heads wondering, why did this conversation not go well? It's this person's the problem. When we don't have the ability to think about how did I deliver this? So if it's a business relationship that's important to you, but you want to say no to this, you want to think of a great way to say no.